Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. The first verse of the 101st Psalm reads, I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. This psalm has been the favorite of many a leader through the years. It's easy to think of its author David in his private prayer place, pondering the monumental task of bringing order and equity to his beloved country. We can visualize him looking out over the battered landscape of political wreckage, saw the left in his wake as he madly placed his personal gratification ahead of the heaven-sent opportunity given him to establish a just and compassionate kingdom. How would David go about winning first the respect and then the trust and allegiance of an abused people who had grown up used to seeing official privilege granted through corruption and cruelty? How could he hope to instill in them again the tremendous vision of their being God's special people, meant to share a unique destiny and a divine mission to be bastions of truth and integrity, thus shining as beacons of hope to a pagan sea all about themselves? Certainly for his times, the first verse of the 101st Psalm was a starting point. The long years between then and now have brought many a change in this old world, but human tendencies remain the same, and the principles of holiness touched in David's language never change. What worked for David will still work today. So let's examine what they are. We may regard the 101st Psalm both as a prayer and since it was recorded for worship services of the nation, also as a covenant David shared with his people. The psalm opens abruptly with a strong expression of decision, I will sing. Life ahead was sure to involve many decision. The king drew them all together into one big ball and told his people and his God, I will. But he didn't stop there, warrior that he was. He underlined his commitment by promising he would go to his work with a song on his lips. He couldn't know, well, none of us can, just how hard and long the journey ahead would be, how many plots against the throne, how many foreign rivals may threaten his nation before all was well. But he bravely grasped a belief that the God who had made him king could guide him to success if he would face the next Goliath as he had the first one, and he pledged to do it, not only to do it, but to do it with a song. The second part of the verse tells us the words of David's song, I will sing of mercy and judgment. Notice he put mercy first. The term is translated from the Hebrew, he said, and is defined loyalty, joint obligation, faithfulness, goodness, graciousness, and then godly action. Those are all qualities we would want in a good friend. They beautify the resume of anyone seeking public office. Loyal people who see raising their own children as a joint obligation to be done faithfully with lots of good things administered with warmth and courtesy, who want to pray with their family and take them to worship services, well, they tend to be good marriage material. These things make good neighbors, good citizens, and good leaders. But although graciousness is first in David's catalog of spiritual pillars on which he pledged in this psalm to build his reign, it's not alone. It has a counterpart. I will sing of mercy and judgment. The Hebrew mishpat is often in the Old Testament. Eighteen times it is translated right. Eleven times as ordinance. Eight times it is law. Although mercy should precede judgment, A nation of people cannot long live together if there are no laws, clearly framed and understood, evenly applied and faithfully executed. There must be some consequence for wrongdoing. David concluded his vow with a worshipful, O unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. He meant to do these things for no political reasons, but as part of his worship to his God, thus in the fidelity of his heart. We may not all lead a nation, but we can all share in his integrity. Have you talked to God today? You have been listening to God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.